Hey guys, woke up this morning, I was 241.2 and my glucose is currently 79 and that is about 27-ish hours into my fast. So today is day 13 and it's funny how time flies when you're having fun and I love creating this content and I hope that I can reach people and help a lot of you out there. And so I think that part of that process since that I've covered the basics now and how to do them and how to execute them is I want to equip you with all of the knowledge and all the resources that I have had. And so I try to keep these videos to around five minutes, but today I'm going to break that rule. And over the next six videos, you'll understand why. I call this next series my inspirational series, and I want to go down in order of how I met these individuals, not in person, but like through their research and online, and why they inspire me, specifically what it is about them to ins that inspires me. Uh, today's topic, as you've seen from the title, is going to be about Jason Fung. He was the first person to inspire me and make me believe that I can reverse my type 2 diabetes without medication, without complications, without making myself sicker over time. And so Jason Fung is my inspiration for reversing type 2 diabetes, but more specifically for fasting. And so in the description below, I've got a link to his bio, I've got a link to his website, a link to his YouTube channel, a link to, you know, four of his, his books that he's written on Amazon, as well as a link to a Google search with all the books he's written. Please, please, please check this guy out. Like, he literally wrote the book on fasting and the book on diabetes and the book on obesity and the book on PCOS. You see where I'm going with this. All of these diseases are, relate are related and preventable and reversible. And so you really need to read his books depending upon whichever disease you're you're suffering from, right? This Since this channel is focused on type 2 diabetes and prediabetes, I suggest that you start there. So I am actually going to read, there's a lot about him that inspires me. Uh, to give you a little bit more background, he is a nephrologist, which means that he's a kidney doctor, right? And I'm going to uh, pull up a little bit from his bio that he's got on Diet Doctor. I'll read part of it says that Jason Fung is a Canadian nephrologist. He's a world-leading expert on intermittent fasting and low-carb, especially for treating people with type 2 diabetes. He has written three best-selling health books and has co-founded the Intensive Dietary Management Program. Dr. Fung has his own website, thefastingmethod.com. Dr. Fung graduated from the University of Toronto and completed his residency at the University of California, Los Angeles. He lives and works in Toronto, Canada. Dr. Fung occasionally collaborates with the, diet, the team diet doctor on fasting related topics. Together, we want to make it a simple, as simple for people to understand and implement intermittent fasting and improve their health. Uh, below is some of the materials. Uh, that Dr. Fung has on Diet Doctor. And then there's a link to his videos, written profiles, yada, yada. So what I want to share with you all today specifically, it's going to be a little long, but it's worth it. You can always read it for yourself. So this is his kind of story of how he got there. And this is what he wrote in the Diabetes Code. Um, and this will give you a better understanding of who he is and how he came to his journey and conclusions and how it's inspired me on my journey and how I hope that it also inspires you. So it says, despite the title of this book, which was the diabetes code, right? And it's in-depth exploration of type two diabetes. It may surprise you to learn that I do not truly consider this book to be about diabetes. What? I can hear you protesting. Almost every word in this book discusses diabetes. No, my friend, this book is truly about hope. I hope we can eradicate type 2 diabetes with a, within a generation. I hope we can erase all of the disease, diseases associated with metabolic syndrome. I hope we can recover all of the associated costs, both in dollars and human suffering. I hope we can accomplish these goals without drugs and without surgery using only knowledge as our weapon. Interjecting, 
that too is my goal. And this is why Jason Fung inspires me so much. The next section says how it began my journey to hope. In a sense, this book parallels my own journey. I entered medical school at the University of Toronto just after I turned 19. Once I finished medical school, I trained conventionally in internal medicine, and then I spent two years completing my specialty training in kidney disease, nephrology, at Cedars Sinai Mount Medical Institute in Los Angeles. Since 2001, I have practiced clinical nephrology in Toronto, which means that I have now spent more than half of my life in the study of medicine. During my entire education, I received virtually no training in nutrition and certainly did not see it as my era of area of specialization. As a kidney specialist, I know that type 2 diabetes is by far the biggest cause of kidney disease. I have seen many patients with mild forms of the disease and treated them exactly as I, as well as countless other doctors have been taught. I prescribed medication to keep their blood glucose low. When that didn't work, I prescribed insulin. When that didn't work, I kept on increasing the dose Every medical school and medical association taught and still teaches that high glucose control was that tight, sorry, that tight glucose control was the key to managing type 2 diabetes. After treating thousands of patients over decades, it gradually dawned on me that none of these diabetes medications actually made any real difference to the health of the patients. Sure. The medical schools said these drugs improved patient health, but any benefits were imperceivable. Whether these patients took their medications or not, they still progressed to more and more severe forms of the disease. Their kidneys failed, they had heart attacks, they got strokes, they went blind, they needed amputations. Once their kidneys failed, I would start them on dialysis. I have seen more diabetic foot infections, more diabetic ulcers, heart attacks, and strokes than I can count. Even if they made a statistical difference, the medicines I prescribed made no real clinical difference. I suspected that we only thought these, medication, these medicines made a difference because we were being told they made a difference. Clinical trial evidence finally caught up with the real-world experience in 2008. That year, the results of the landmark randomized accord and advanced studies were released, followed by shortly by the origin in VAT studies, confirming perfectly my experience treating patients. And the studies provided conclusive, proved conclusively that using blood glucose lowering medications for type 2 diabetes was useless. Doctors like me were certainly prescribing a lot of medications, but these drugs provided no protection against heart disease, stroke, death, eye disease, or kidney disease. The Terrible Five. If anything, insulin seemed to make things worse, not better. Straight from Dr. Fung's mouth. Now, it was a proven fact. This core principle of treating type 2 diabetes taught in every medical school in the world had just been disproven. The entire treatment paradigm of type 2 diabetes needed to change. We had to incorporate this new, hard-won knowledge to gain a newer, more complete understanding. However, what happened next was unfortunate. Even if it was entirely predictable. Rather than developing new paradigms of insulin resistance, which could lead to more effective treatments, we clung to the old failed paradigms because it is far easier to ignore an inconvenient truth than to face it. So we kept giving the same exact medications, using the same treatments, and getting the same poor outcomes. Same old thinking, same old results. Insanity, as Albert Einstein would have said. Patients continue to get sick and die. Breaking paradigms is hard work. We are so intent on treating the high blood glucose that we forgot to treat the diabetes. If losing weight was the key to reversing diabetes, how can medications like insulin, which cause weight gain, be beneficial? We made no serious attempts to look, at, to look for explanations. The reality was troublesome. 
So it was easier for doctors and researchers to live in a pretend world where these medications were correct, were the correct treatment for diabetes, new paradigms for obesity. While thought diabetes research, researchers may have been looking for alternatives, new paradigms were forming in the field of obesity medicine. Interesting studies are being published about the effectiveness and dangerous and dangers of low carbohydrate diets. In the late 1990s, the low carbohydrate Atkins style diets enjoyed on a huge a huge surge of popularity. Health professionals like me and most other physicians were aghast, positive that these high fat Atkins style diets would cause heart disease. A number of trials were launched in the early 2000s to prove this precise point. Then a funny thing happened, or rather it didn't, anything bad. Those predictions of the high fat diet would cause high cholesterol levels and clog arteries were wrong. Actually, the opposite was true. Not only did patients lose weight, their entire metabolic profile improved, including their cholesterol levels. It happened to me. <laughs> Uh, trial after trial showed that these low carbohydrate, high fat diets were safe and effective. A few years later, in 2006, the Women's Health Initiative, the largest random dietary trial ever done, proved beyond a doubt that low fat diets did not protect against heart disease, strokes, or cancers. Worse, the calorie restriction also did not cause weight loss or reduce type 2 diabetes. The entire foundation of modern nutritional advice was completely shattered. The entire treatment paradigm of obesity needed to change. Yet once again, physicians around the world continued to practice as if nothing had changed. We clung to old failed paradigms like a life raft. We continued to preach low fat diet. We continued to advise people to eat less and move more. We got the same poor results and patients continued to become obese and get sick. Same old thinking, same old results. Yes, insanity. Not satisfied with these two deep paradoxes, I started to look for answers starting from ground zero. I made no assumptions about what caused obesity or type 2 diabetes. This was the most important step. Breaking free of all the old assumptions allowed me to see, all of a sudden, how certain facts hidden in plain view became obvious. My research for answers always starts with why. The question of causality has always intrigued me. I like to understand the mechanism of disease. I like the question of why. Obesity is no different. Why do people get fat? I wondered. This question is absolutely critical because without understanding how people get fat, I could not understand how to effectively treat the disease. I had never really considered it this important question, and it turns out that virtually nobody else had either. We all thought that we already knew the answers. Too many calories cause obesity. If that were true, then reducing calories should cause weight loss. Except it doesn't. The failure rate of caloric restriction diets was astronomically high. My search for the true underlining cause led ultimately to my recognition that hormonal imbalances, predominantly of insulin, is the key to obesity. I detailed this process in my first book, The Obesity Code. You guys should check it out. Amazing book. But this answer only led me to another paradox. If too much insulin was causing obesity, then why would I, as a physician, prescribe insulin to overweight type 2 diabetics? It would only make things worse. Insulin was the problem, not the answer. Interestingly, my patients already knew. Doc, they would say, you've always told me to lose weight, but, but now you give me insulin, which has made me put on 50 pounds. How is that good? The answer was, it's not good. It was absurd. The next, my next question then was, why does type 2 diabetes develop? Again, always start with the why. 
Everybody agreed that elevated insulin resistance caused the high blood glucose that was the hallmark of type 2 diabetes. But what caused the elevated ins insulin resistance? This was the true question that I desperately needed an answer to. The key insight came from understanding obesity. Too much insulin causes obesity. So it is logical to conclude, so it is logical that too much insulin could also cause insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes. That diabetes and type 2, that obesity and type 2 diabetes were manifestations of the same disease and simply flipped sides to the, and simply flip sides to the same coin. <laughs> explained perfectly how these two diseases were so closely related. Albert Einstein once said, when you have eliminated the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. If the problem was too much insulin, then the answer was simplicity itself. Lower insulin. But how? No drugs at the time effectively did that. The solution was to go back to the basics. As a dietary disease, it required a dietary solution, not a pharmaceutical one. Since refined carbohydrates stimulate insulin the most and dietary fat the least, the obvious solution was to eat a low-carbohydrate, high-fat diet. Intensive dietary management spread the word. In 2011, I established the Dietary Management Program in Scarborough, Ontario, along with Megan Ramos, a medical researcher long interested in this exact problem. Together, we counseled patients, many with type 2 diabetes, on how to follow a low-carbohydrate, high-fat diet. I believed and hoped they would improve their health. The results were a disaster. Nobody lost weight. Nobody got better. A review of my patient's diet diaries revealed that they were eating lots of bread, noodles, and rice. They had misunderstood these foods as being part of a low-carbohydrate diet. Having followed a low-carbohydrate diet for most of their lives, this new regimen, oh sorry, having followed a low-fat diet for most of their lives, this new regimen was entirely foreign to them. They didn't know what to eat. I needed to find a simpler solution. One day, a friend told me about her cleanses, and immediately I rolled my eyes. Like most people, my gut reaction was that fasting would never work. But, but what really was wrong with fasting? I was intrigued enough to start investigating the medical literature, most of which was decades old. The more I understood the physiology, the more I realized there was simply no reason that fasting couldn't be used successfully as a therapeutic intervention. After all, it was the oldest and perhaps simplest solution. I started to guide pa patients through diet and fasting regimes. This time, the results co were completely different. Some of the success stories were almost unbelievable. Patients who had been taking high doses of insulin for decades would eliminate all of their med medications in a matter of weeks. My patients lost significant weight and kept it off. Interestingly, many patients reported that it was much easier to follow the program than they had anticipated. They expected their hunger to grow unimaginably intense, but the opposite was true. They continued fasting, their hungers and cravings often dissipated, like a morning fog. Some thought their stomach had shrunk. They expected fasting would leave them weak and unable to concentrate, but the opposite was true. Women who had barely had enough energy to walk in the door would come running in. Their husbands said they couldn't keep up with them any longer. As the pieces came together, I began lecturing to both patients and physicians around Toronto. I posted my six-part lecture, the... Etiology of Obesity series on YouTube. And I started my blog, The Intensive Dietary Management. To share my findings with the general public, one night I gave a lecture to a group of specialist physicians about obesity. After the first hour long lecture, they were so interested in the new paradigms that I gave a second lecture. 
One of those physicians later contacted Rob Sanders of Greystone Books, who asked me to write a book about obesity and type 2 diabetes. Rob has been hugely supportive from the beginning, for which I am very grateful. There was too much material for a single book to probably address the misconceptions of obesity and type 2 diabetes and laid the foundation for treatment. The book would have been 800 pages, intimidating just to look at. The natural solution was to divide this material into two books, The Obesity Code, published in 2016, to set the stage for a deeper understanding of type 2 diabetes in this book. Together, they enabled readers to naturally reverse obesity and type 2 diabetes. Every single day, I see patients who type 2 diabetes is reversing, patients who are losing weight and getting healthier. This is the reason I became a doctor. I want to help people regain their health. And I want to give people hope that they can indeed defeat obesity and type 2 diabetes completely naturally. That's perfect because patients also do not want to be sick or take medications. It's a win-win. Hope for the future. Type 2 diabetes is currently the leading cause of blindness, kidney failure, amputations, heart attacks, strokes, cancer, and cancer. But that doesn't have to be our future. The pages of Obesity Code and the Diabetes Code contain the knowledge to reverse type 2 diabetes. This is not the end, but only the beginning. A new hope arises, a new dawn breaks. So I know that was a lot. Uh, thank you guys for anyone who decided to listen to all of that. But I thought it was important to share with you what inspires me. Right. And I, I was already inspired. But after reading that, I was like triple expired. Please, please, please go. If you do nothing else, if you take nothing else away from anything I've said or any of my other videos, I, I beg you guys, please check out the work of Dr. Fung. It is literally life changing. I can say that I am still alive and in good health today, despite, you know, even having pre-diabetes, I am so much further away from where I started, all because of this man. It all started with him. And I would say get the, at least get the diabetes code, right? And then check out the complete guide to intermittent to fasting. Uh, start there. It's great information. He is a real medical doctor, right? So some of the people on my list are not medical doctors. They're chiropractors or chiropractic care. They also give great advice, but take you can take his Jason Fung's advice to the bank. He is a licensed medical doctor, right? If, in case you're worried about that. And all of his research is well documented, so you can check all of his sources. <laughs> and I am living proof. I can testify that it works. So... Please stay tuned with me, guys, and together, you and I and everyone out there, we are going to slay the dreaded diabetes dragon.